historically, every five or ten years, entrepreneurs, which is you, primarily young people, come up with some new breakthrough. You know, iPod, iPhones, eBay, Google, Twitter, and it ignites, you know, some huge new need. Guitar Hero, even as big as Guitar Hero. And all of a sudden, you know, sales go through the roof, it employs people, and in theory, it makes people's lives better. We're seeing that now with clean tech. And I'll tell you, just the things I talked about, zero emission vehicles, this is a big deal. So to your point, what is this going to do for the economy? We're in a recession. One of the things that jumpstarts you out of a recession, I mean, part of it is consumer psychology, but part of it are products that people have to have that drive the economy. This Tesla Model S, not the sports car, which is historic, that goes zero to 60 like a Ferrari, but this five-seater that's cheaper. We released that car, I think, five and a half, six weeks ago in Los Angeles, and we've taken over 1,000 orders in five weeks. So we're taking more orders for this than GM's taking orders for Saturn. <laughs> so the point is, I believe that the clean tech industry is likely to help provide the jump start that will lift America and hopefully the rest of the world out of recession. Um, you saw today, I don't know if you follow this as closely as I do, but we had the first big IPO. We've had in 10 months, longest stretch in 50 years since we've had a big IPO, and it was a billion dollar company. I love this joke. The company is called Solar Wind. Has nothing to do with clean tech. <laughs> nothing to do with solar, nothing to do with wind. It's okay. It's a software company from Austin. People at UT beat you to the punch. But this is going to reignite the economy. I think the next two or three IPOs, big ones we see, are likely to be clean tech companies. By the way, Tesla and a firm called Silver Spring, it's in the smart grid space, I think will be blockbuster IPOs. Clean tech will help lift the company, uh, country out of recession. By the way, one of the things you should always ask yourself is, where are the most IPOs happening? And for my entire life, your entire life, I'm just about the oldest person here with a few exceptions. Where are the most IPOs? Are, are we awake here, folks? The US, every year, huge. California leading the United States leading the pack. And California leading the U.S., it's all happening right here at about a third of it by Stanford grads. Amazing. But the question you should always ask, by the way, always ask in life, is who's number two? Who's behind me? And the answer now is China. China is really closing in on the United States, especially in clean tech IPOs. It's stunning. And by the way, for my whole life, you talk about doing investing in China. And you guys say, well, big market. But there are all these transparency issues. You know, we'd say, you know, these, we need these laws and these accounting standards, and the Chinese would by and large say, we don't want to have the U.S. dictate this stuff to us. We're going to do it our own way, and the U.S. can go jump in the lake. But regardless of what the U.S. wanted to dictate, and regardless of what the Chinese government thought was appropriate, there was a powerful force that exceeded all else. I guess? Please, work with me here, folks. Take a guess. It's the force of human greed. People want to make money. Chinese watch TV and the internet like everybody else. They're looking at Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and Sergey and Larry and saying, I want to take a company public. If you want to take a company public, you've got to have audited financials. The hottest commodity in the world right now, I think, is a Chinese-speaking CFO. <laughs> If you speak Chinese and you went to Stanford or UCLA or Berkeley Business School, you've won. It's, it's like the jackpot. They're dying to get you right now to take a company public because that is how you can make money because the Chinese government allows you. The Chinese government has decided it's a good thing to have companies go public. So all of a sudden, it's changed. Our firm is thinking about how quickly we can open an office in Beijing. And it's a fascinating thing. I'll tell you one parallel story to go with it. Almost every week, We'll see some, you know, a ton of entrepreneurs who are Americans and immigrants from everywhere and some from China. And whenever we see a deal from China, it's almost always growing quickly, just like the other deals we see. But the entrepreneur will say, and it's profitable. I say, your company's profitable? You have a startup? It's profitable? 
I've just seen 90 entrepreneurs. None of them have profitable companies. Well, and they'll say, well, what do you mean? We come from China. There's no safety net here. We, we have no choice but to be profitable. So we are.